I'm the engineer from Team Fortress 2, and intros are a waste of time. Team Fortress 2 has hit many problems. Let's start with player retention. Weapons take up backpack space. Backpack space runs out. Problems with new players' access to weapons? Random item drops. I suggest a new modular progression system for Team Fortress 2. How do we measure that someone is getting better at TF2 or succeeding? We could say kills, but then does that count for people overextending and dying? No. We could say they are succeeding from objective captures. But measuring that would measure how many times the objective is captured back and forth and not the victory itself. The real answer is extremely easy. It's victories or wins, whatever you prefer calling it. Let's say for the sake of simplicity it takes five wins to say you have proficiently learned the scout. Well, it's about time you could get a new normal scout weapon for your permanent inventory. Five more wins, another five more wins. Another and so on until you have obtained all the weapons for scouting with nice regular clear rewards for helping your team win the game. You may ask, what about multi-class weapons like the reserve shooter? Well, if a player is proficient with any of the classes that use that weapon, let's say 10 wins for each of them, they can get access to that normal weapon, and we can adjust this value depending on how many classes use the weapon so players don't get too much reward for too little work. This system is actually far simpler than contracts or trading that currently exist in Team Fortress 2 that require players to go AFK sitting in spawn. Choosing which contract to use or trying to trade or just generally idling waiting for a random item drop. The new system I suggest wouldn't have this problem. Because this system can exist passively without player input alongside the gameplay and it doesn't make you have to choose one challenge over another. They are all always active while player choice is offered depending on game mode, map or class context of their victories especially outside of weapons. That being for cosmetics, or paints and other special cosmetic attributes that I will talk about later. As for players who have collected all their different weapons, these weapons would have their own challenges. These challenges would track the number of wins for other players to see so you could still track your achievements. This already exists in Team Fortress 2 with strange weapons. And don't worry if you like trading in contracts. These other systems of item acquisition don't necessarily need to go away. It would just be nice to reward people for actually playing the game without taking up their backpack space and respecting everyone's time. Let's save the backpack space for trading and keep the gameplay for gameplay. This could also go for different sets of cosmetics for different wins in different maps and gamma mods, but this I will save that for the first hypothetical counter-arguments. Yes, they can. But first, where are battle passes in Crate's bed? 1. Battle passes disappear after a certain amount of time. 2. Crates and loot boxes drop completely random loot. And finally, 3. They don't reward the player for good behavior or good play or sportsmanship. In the case of battle passes, they only reward a certain kind of good play. The solution is super simple. If you have the one-time reasonable payment of owning a TF2 premium account, you get permanent access to the premium section of the TF2 progression system. To be clear, this would be for cosmetic rewards only and not pay to access different weapons faster like the current system, and the rewards are earned primarily through winning games. These cosmetics would exist alongside the weapons progression system for the premium players, rewarding you for getting wins in the game. To prevent certain cosmetic sets to gain artificial value or just better versions of all the cosmetics in the same slot, they can be normal cosmetics that don't take up backpack space. Based on different challenges and milestones of rewards, they won't overlap the same cosmetic slots within the same reward milestones. Less confusing than it sounds, I'm an engineer, trust me. These different challenges could be based on wins on certain maps, gamma modes, gamma variants, and with different classes within those categories. Worry about people not playing certain maps, gamma modes, or classes anymore because they already have those cosmetics. After certain levels of wins, their cosmetics, just like their weapons, gain strange effects to keep counting wins to show off. Unusual visual effects, different scenes on weapons, Skill counters and festive cosmetics and weapon skins that already exist in the games can be unlocked with time as they don't overlap. You can show off with strange maps and gamma mode filters how many kills or wins or whatever on your favorite map is and not because you got it randomly dropped or just paid for it but because you earned it. As an example if you see someone with a normal Australian scatter gun, you know they got it by playing through winning that certain heart mm, campaign with Scout. Or if you see someone with an unusual ghost hit, you know they have got lots of wins on their favorite Halloween map. Or a medic with part pigment medic gun because you know they love to get wins using their medic gun on mercenary park. 
What's good about this progression system is it can be modular to more than just in-game wins. Free 5 wins is a great measure of becoming proficient as a team player. What about people who make others have a good time in game in different ways? Making them laugh. Have you wearing funny cosmetics and offering you a sandwich? Or players doing a conga line around the map? At the end of each match, players could have an immediate run of photo on which players in a match they enjoyed playing with the most. Sort of like current map voting, but much more democratic. Depending on the result of that vote, players receive points, and those points go towards unlocking an item sets just like all the win progression challenges. I'm sure any other member of the TF2 community hearing this can think of plenty of other ways to use his system for other rewards. Make a TF2 video that gets lots of traction. Here's some all-class cosmetics for every 50 likes. Make an item or map on the workshop that's getting likes. Here's a different unique all-class cosmetic set for map builders and weapon makers respectively. Another great part of this system is from the mixing and matching of these now meaningful cosmetics. You can identify what parts of TF to people enjoy most. Or if you can see something you like, you are encouraged to do something positive with clear and direct methods on how to get that reward. This can all exist alongside the currently existing TF to random drop system scene as it has zero effect on gameplay while giving players who do like to get better at playing the game something to grind for. Even leading to more traction to user guides and community content that help them along the way creating a cycle of engagement and advertisement. Time for the quick fire round. Counter Strike runs on the same engine as Team Fortress 2 and uses a system called VACNIT in a cheat solution rather than VAC Valve any cheat. I'm no expert on this as I focus on hardware. But I'm sure others have covered this for you. It is the biggest short term problem we currently face. Problem 3 Random Crits and Random Spread Turn off random crits and random spread by default on servers. That was easy. Problem 4 Competitive Imbalance Balance.tf and Team Fortress to custom weapon servers balance adjustments have different solutions to in-game balance I personally prefer Balance.tf But even using toned down versions of these changes would make a huge amount of the Team Fortress 2 sandbox more viable That or the community weapon ban list for competitive servers Problem 5 Lack of new content Creators.tf has its own reasonably balanced new weapons, tones of high quality maps and custom cosmetics that fit right into the game. While I disagree with the contract system, it seems better than the nothing Valve has added to the game grind-wise. Problem 6, the default setting Sulik. Masterconfig.com have generated up limits user setting profiles to a tier game to quickly get your game running well on your system. Valve could simply make these the new default settings in a game update, also setting the new default FOV value to 90 in my opinion is a pretty good shout. Problem 7 I can't find populated servers with the game types and maps I want to play. TF2 Casual Queue System is great where you can choose maps and game modes, but it can be far expanded with servers from Teamwork.tf Community Quickly and Vanilla.tf. These websites are already available for those interested in giving their huge list of game modes fresh as. Problem 8 TF2 file size is too big, I like all these crazy cosmetics. Halo and Call of Duty Modern Warfare already have solutions to this problem. They let you choose which parts of the game you'd like to install to not waste your dry space. Languages included for Call of Duty. Don't like a VM. Don't install it, change your mind. It installs automatically if you decide to join an MVM server just like custom servers. The same can go for cosmetics. Halo has a toggle to toggle on and off player skin setting for those that don't like them and you can't say that this couldn't work in TF2 as there is already a no hats mod into C space perhaps you can choose to uninstall cosmetics entirely. Problems 9 TF2 seems visually dated. Watch TF2 Max Box mods and download she has an excellent collection of effect enhancements and animation mods that will work on most servers for TF2. I strongly recommend you give these a go as it's simple as downloading them and dragging and dropping them into the correct folder in TF2. Problem 10 official competitive play is poo poo sticky. I'm not a competitive TF2 player and I don't particularly take interest in the competitive scene. However, Valve, other games have their own competitive systems in games such as Dota 2 and Cisco. TF2 has enough overall problems in my opinion before getting involved with individual game modes and subsets of the community. I would also like to add that I am aware that tracking wins for competitive is a bad idea for the cosmetic and weapons progression system I suggest as people will just leave games when they start losing. 
The solution to this is give a player two losses and negative two progress on the progression rewards when they leave the game and they can't start adding back to that number until they play through the sort of competitive match they left to its end. This way people will never join competitive games they aren't mentally prepared to lose in the first place. If you aren't capable of being a good sport then you shouldn't be able to compete until you give evidence that you can be a good sport. And no overwatch gold guns to see here folks. Competitive rewards should be based on the rank you reach, not your win count. Conclusion I don't expect any of this to happen, I just think it's better to say what needs to be done rather than say the state of the game is bad without suggesting a solution. Plenty of the TFT community have done a good job of that and even mentioned a lot of short term solutions for bots and content drought. In the meantime, let's install cozy HUDs, animations and effects of our choice and go on a creators.tf server and do some lovely engineer gaming. I'd like to make special thanks to my patrons Bob and Liam Davey. And I'd like everyone to send their love and thanks to Tyler McVicker whose videos got me back into TF2 and popularized creators.tf, the best way to play Team Fortress right now. Also, thank you to my sources I mentioned and the Team Fortress 2 community. Hey! Like it if this is why your right to property is antithetical to Christ Hey, the time is right, so if you got something to prove So a fucking yellow and black triangle